We have all heard of the plight of Rohingya Muslims in Burma. And it is wrong what is happening to the Rohingya Muslims of Burma. But did those same media outlets tell you about the Karen Christians who are also being butchered by the Burmese government? Nothing. No! When was the last time that we saw a bunch of liberal progressives protesting in their thousands for the persecution of Christians in the Middle East? Exactly. Never! But if someone comes along and hands out a leaflet saying, oh, some people are coming to criticize Islam, people like him will be out there on the street waving placards saying Nazis go home. I will shout louder than you. So the brother said, the brother said that he is opposed. Notice the tolerance of the liberal progressive. I want to talk about um, the recent case that has happened um, with the ashes in Northern Ireland. I'm sure many of you have, have probably heard about it in the media, but perhaps many of you haven't, particularly those outside of the UK. The ashes um, owned a bakery in Northern Ireland, and that bakery was targeted by a militant uh, homosexual activist, um, who, who wanted the Ashes Bakery to bake a cake that said support gay marriage. The Ashes family took the, the money, they took the order, um, and then when, they, then when it started getting processed, they realized what they were being asked to do, they refused, and they gave a full refund back to the activist. Resultantly, the activist then, um, with the Equalities uh, Commission, launched a action, a legal action against the Asher family and against their bakery um, for the grounds of discrimination with the intention that by doing so they should um, uh, punish the Ashers for what they did. The Ashers fought it in the court, in the Northern Ireland High Court and then in the Supreme Court. Uh, two courts, the two lower courts went against them and then the Supreme Court ruled in their favor and I want to talk about why this case is important why it was fundamentally important that the Ashers won this case it's simply the matter that if the Ashers had not won this case what would have resulted is that um, the state would have won for itself the right to compel speech that would have meant, had the state won that, that a Muslim publishing company could have been compelled to publish leaflets saying that Allah was gay. It meant that um, a homosexual supporting newspaper might have to run an ad uh, denouncing gay marriage. We escaped that fate literally by the skin of our teeth when the Supreme Court ruled in favor of the Ashes and against the uh, homosexual activist. We have seen an erosion in the UK of freedom of speech. Under the guise of hate laws, freedom of speech has been continuously narrowed and eroded. And that process has been going on for a while. And for the first time in British legal history that I'm aware of, or certainly the first time in quite a long time, we've had a legal case in the UK that spoke about the possibility of compelled speech, speech that is obligatory. Now in Canada, they've already tried to pass a law about compelled speech, saying that however someone identifies, whatever gender they identify as, you must address them as such. 
This is dangerous to a democracy. If speech becomes compelled, if speech becomes compelled, then that means our freedom of conscience becomes dramatically eroded. And so we should give thanks to the Ashes for standing up for their beliefs, for standing up for their beliefs. Let us, let us finish that, let me finish that talk and then we'll take questions. Right, so in terms of, in terms of the Ashes, in terms of the Ashes, it is very important that we finish the, uh, that we complete the idea of freedom of speech and hold on to it. Forgive me, I'm a little bit thrown off my uh, track of thought. We've got to ask ourselves, how did we end up in this situation? Let us just take two steps this way so these guys can talk without me disturbing them. Okay, so we've got to, we've got to ask ourselves, how did we get into this situation where the liberal establishment is now trying to take away the freedoms that our great grandfathers once gave their lives for? And the answer is this, that immediately after the Second World War, the two generations that were born after that time were possibly the most useless generations in history. They are the generations that let freedom slip through their fingers. They are the generations that let identity slip through their fingers. They are the generations that made a conscious choice to forget history completely, to forget their own culture completely. And whilst they were sleeping and pursuing a hedonistic lifestyle, a lifestyle of going down to the pub and finding how many girls you could sleep with or how many guys you could sleep with and, pers and measuring the success of their own life purely in terms of their material possessions, a group of vipers crawled into the structures of the state. A group of vipers settled into the structures of the state and in so doing those vipers have tried to refashion our society based upon a utopian vision that is destructive to individual liberty and is destructive to the idea of democracy and is destructive to the idea of identity and is destructive to the idea of identity rooted in history. These vipers are a part and parcel of our judicial system, our parliamentary system, our police force, our army. They are the ones that are governing our lives and they are trying to fashion our way of thinking to suit their own agenda. And we cannot resist what they are seeking to do without having a profound understanding of our own identity in something other than the state. And what is other than the state in terms of European identity is the church, because the church is older than any nation state. If we do not have a sense of our own values, our own worldview, our own identity, our own culture, our own history that is not separate to the state, we will not be able to resist these kind of movements of the state to refashion us. And this goes as much for Christians as well as for those who want to resist this liberal progressive thought. And I find in the words of scripture the inspiration necessary to resist this kind of movement. In Esther chapter 4, starting at verse 14, we read, For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place, and you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have attained royalty 
for such a time as this. When you become a Christian, you enter into the royal priesthood. If you are silent, O Christian, if you are silent, church, the salvation of the church will be found elsewhere. It doesn't have to be in England. God can sacrifice the English church just as he once sacrificed the Spanish church and then liberated it at a later time. He can sacrifice the English church, the church will not be conquered. But if you don't find your strength, English-speaking church, your house will perish, but the nation of the kingdom of God will continue. But you have found royalty for such a time as this. You have found royalty and identity for such a time as now. To stand up against the liberal progressives, the xenophobic extreme right, and the Islamists who are now seeking to destroy our society. Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, go assemble all the Jews who are found in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my maidens also will fast in the same way and thus I will go into the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went away and did just as Esther had commanded him. When the people of Israel were at the point of being totally destroyed. Oh, thank you very much, Steve. Seems I have a ladder donated by Steve. The man who was once my part-time heckler. So, Esther, Esther um, said that I will go to the king and I will plead for the people of Israel. I will use what influence I have to save the people of Israel from destruction. And she said, I will do this even if it costs me my life. Oh Christian, how much are you willing to sacrifice for the kingdom of God when our brothers and sisters are being killed in the Middle East, are being killed in Burma, are being killed in North Korea, are being imprisoned in China, are being killed in South Sudan and in Sudan, are being oppressed across the Muslim world, in Egypt, in Jordan, are being discriminated against here in the UK. Where is your strength? Where is your determination to pursue what is right, even to the point of martyrdom. Remember the words of Paul, who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Just as it is written, for your sake we are being put to death all day long. We were considered as sheep to be slaughtered. But in all these things, we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. As Christians, we are called to overwhelmingly conquer the political forces of liberalism that are a cancer upon our society. We are called to overwhelmingly conquer the forces of Islam that seek to oppose the gospel. We are called to overwhelmingly conquer the forces of the neo-fascists and the neo-Nazis who seek to place identity in race rather than in faith. As Christians, we are called to conquer even if by doing so we die. If you are not afraid to die for your faith, what then is left to fear? If we as Christians lose our fear of man because we alone fear God who can destroy the body and the soul, where man can only destroy the body, what then should we fear when we stand up to the Islamists or when we stand up to the liberal progressive state? We don't have a concept of jihad in the Christian faith. 
That is not what our faith teaches. What I am calling for is for Christians to rediscover their strength, to rediscover their identity rooted in church history, and to stand upon that identity whatever the cost, whatever the cost, and to do what is necessary to stand in solidarity with our brothers and sisters in their sufferings, again, whatever the cost. You are called to be more than conquerors. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able, able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Any questions? Any questions? No, the heckler doesn't want to ask any questions. He's calling for jihad. Okay. So. Nice way, bro. Hey, peace way, bro. You okay? Yeah, I haven't read your book yet. I have it though. I have it though. This is my book. This is his book. Just another one of the now many converts from Islam. There are many converts from Islam. Many Muslims are leaving the Islamic faith, and many of them are being persecuted for doing so, even in this country. One second, bro. Let me just one second. Let me just make a point. Yeah, Christians are suffering in this country for leaving Islam. There are examples of it where the state and the leadership of the Church of England have simply washed their hands because the ideology that they follow is not willing to speak about or to stand up to the Christophobia that exists in many sections, but not all, of the Islamic community. And it isn't just in this country. Christians suffer regular pogroms in Egypt, anti-Christian pogroms in Egypt. They suffer anti-Christian pogroms in Pakistan. They have recently only just survived a militant campaign to exterminate them completely in Syria and in Jordan. And to the shame of every Christian in the West, our leadership neither had the balls, the imagination or the courage to stand up for them or to call the church to rally to their defense. Not a single protest, not a single calling to the streets. Our bishops in the church are useless and they need to be dethroned. If they cannot stand up for the gospel and the kingdom of God and the church, they are not worthy of the title of bishop. Boo your bishops, boo, boo, boo. boo them, boo, boo. unless they have proclaimed a Christian solidarity. If they have compromised in even the slightest on their Christian identity, withhold your offerings, starve them of cash, reject them in public, because these leaders are not worthy of the title. We Christians must rediscover our own identity rooted in the church with the values of the kingdom that are established upon the gospel. And that means we must reject liberal progressive thought. We must reject the nation state. We must reject compromise with Islamization. We must reject the neo-fascists and the nationalists who seek to split men off solely on the basis of language and the color of skin. The kingdom of God is worth giving your life for. It is worth dying for. 
If you are not willing to die for the kingdom of God, I call you to a better excellence. I call you to a higher standard of Christian life. You must be willing to give everything as a libation to God. And that means opposing all those philosophies, all those ideologies, all those religions that are opposed to our great God and King, Jesus Christ. So, the brother asks a fair question. What Christophobia happens here? I'll give him three examples of the kind of Christophobia I am speaking about. In Northern Ireland, a Christian baker has only just been cleared of a hate speech crime simply because he refused to write a message on a cake that was contrary to his own values. The state was this close to legitimizing compelled speech in the UK. That's how close we came to losing freedom of speech in the UK. The state tried to establish compelled speech. In Sheffield, a young student was kicked off his course for simply proposing the Christian concept of marriage. He was kicked off his university course. His career was ruined because of Christophobia. Christians in the UK have lost their jobs and businesses simply for practicing their faith. I would suggest to you that if you are someone who believes in equality and tolerance, that perhaps you should look at those who are speaking on your behalf because they are using this language to oppress Christians in this country and are ignoring the plight of Christians in other countries. We have all heard of the plight of Rohingya Muslims in Burma. And it is wrong what is happening to the Rohingya Muslims of Burma. But did those same media outlets tell you about the Karen Christians who are also being butchered by the Burmese government? Nothing. No, none of you have heard about it. Because the BBC works to a double standard where one community is placed above another community, where the lives of Christians are worth less than the lives of Muslims. If the BBC refused, refused to publish the cartoons that showed Muhammad in a derogatory fashion, but that same institution broadcast the Jerry Springer opera that mocked our Lord Jesus Christ. These are your leaders. These are the people who deem themselves fit to tell you how to think, what to say, what not to say. They tell you what to know and what not to know. And like gullible sheep who have gone astray because you have lost sight of that great shepherd, Jesus Christ, you have allowed them to form your identity in a way that contradicts your history. If you were born in this land and you are an Anglo-Saxon, a Celt, a Scandinavian, a German, Spanish, if you are European, your history is church history. Your identity is the Christian faith. Your values are Christian. And it isn't just in Europe. The Christian faith was established in Africa 2,000 years ago. There was a papacy established in Alexandria at the same time as it was established in Rome. The Christian faith is universal. 
It doesn't belong to one ethnicity or group. And it is the only basis by which all of these groups who are resisting commercialism, Americanization, liberal progressive thought, Nazism, fascism, or Islamization can find a solidarity and a unity that cuts across countries. <laughs> heard of the word conversation. <laughs> I will take the hint. Are there any questions? <laughs> you have a question. Uh, I thought you were actually saying that it's the other way around. Yeah, it is the other way around. Yeah. What's the other way around? What, what you just said? That it's not that, that it's 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 um, Muslims that are being persecuted, not Christians. Okay. So the brother raises a point. He says. It is the other way around. So what I would ask him, and anyone who wants to help him, to find for me where are the anti-Muslim pogroms in Pakistan? Where are the anti-Muslim pogroms in Egypt? Because there are anti-Christian pogroms in Pakistan, and there are anti-Christian pogroms in Egypt. I would ask him, show me the militants that are bombing on almost a weekly basis, attacking almost a weekly basis, the mosques, because there are Islamist networks bombing churches right across the Middle East, right across Pakistan, right across the Islamic world. Christians suffered ethnic cleansing in Iraq and Syria less than 10 years ago, less than five years ago, less than three years ago. And yet, we are supposed to believe that somehow we are the oppressor. No, the church is the one being oppressed. Any other questions? You see that kind of that kind of oppression, like in America, of Muslims. You know, like uh, don't you see that the same kind of oppression in in, in America, okay. and in this country, in in some instances. So yeah. let me deal with the atheist question. So the brother says, don't we see that kind of thing in America? So. I am yet to see a consistent pattern of anti-Muslim riots in America. But I do not have to look far to find anti-Christian riots in Pakistan or anti-Christian riots in Egypt, in Saudi Arabia, where Islam has dominated for 1400 years unchallenged. It is against the law for a Saudi citizen to be a Christian. Is such a law existing in America? No. So what we have is an industry of victimhood called Islamophobia in the West that disguises and hides real prejudice, real Christophobia emanating from the Muslim community against my own brothers and sisters and for the state, for the sake of the state and its political agenda I have to be silent about it. Oh, you're silent. I would right sooner now. die than be silent. I will speak up, and if you're a Christian, you need to speak up. You need to find your voice. You need to find your confidence. Goodbye. That's my voice. It's not just Muslims. Communists are killing Christians. Nationalist Buddhists are killing Christians. Christian solidarity is something that all Christians need to show against all of our persecutors, wherever they come from and no matter how powerful they are.
Any other question? Will you talk against what about the, the George James? Bush's Christianity and his uh, belief in God that uh, sent him to uh, the right the right decision to go to Iraq and Afghanistan? Okay. So the therefore killing Muslims. So the, the brother wants me to speak against George Bush's Christianity. I will not speak against their Christianity. I will only speak against their failure to apply their faith properly. Can you not do that with the invasion of Iraq? I was against. Iraq was a country in which Christians suffered the same way everyone in Iraq suffered because of the dictatorship of Saddam Hussein. They were not targeted for their faith. After the war in Iraq, after George Bush's ignorant actions there, Christians began to suffer because they were targeted for their faith. And this is the problem with American conservatism in America, is that it mistakes nationalism for Christianity. A Christian political narrative is about helping the church to be stronger from one generation to the next. Not about helping America be stronger. It's about using American power for the benefit of the church. I will criticize George Bush's politics, not his religion. So you let him ask a question. If the Christians were persecuted in Iraq before the invasion, how come the Prime Minister Tariq Aziz was a Christian? So, so, the brother wasn't listening to what I said. He wasn't listening to what I said, and neither was our atheist friend, nor our heckler here. Because for those of you that were actually paying attention, I said that Saddam Hussein and his dictatorship did not target Christians. They were targeted after the fall of Saddam Hussein. And I am criticizing George Bush's policy because, yes, because he put the interests of America before the interests of his brothers and sisters. So when over 50 million people died in Europe in the First World War and the Second World War, brother, was it the Muslims brother, who were responsible for them? Brother, let this brother ask a question because he wanted to heckle a minute ago. Do you have a question? No, 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 no. Okay, does anyone else you wanted to ask a question? I'll ask another question. Uh, so do you not think there, there's a sense of uh, dehumanizing Muslims that then brings rise to uh, non, uh, like uh, people not caring that we are sending, that Saudi Arabia is bombing Yemen and killing Muslims. Saudi Arabia doesn't represent Islam in the same way that George Bush doesn't represent Christianity. So it's a bit disingenuous for you not to acknowledge that fact. Okay. So the brother, I don't know if you heard that point. It was quite a long point. The brother basically said, isn't there a dehumanization of Muslims? I guess going off in the West. And that Saudi Arabia doesn't represent Islam like George Bush doesn't represent Christianity. Let me be clear. I believe that all men are made in the image of God regardless of their faith. And it is the fact that they are made in the image of God that gives them intrinsic dignity. And I find it hypocritical that the Western powers are now incited against Saudi Arabia for the murder of a single journalist when they were all silent when Saudi Arabia was killing hundreds of children in Yemen. By, however, what I find strange is that my liberal progressive friend is so vocal about Islamophobia and so silent about Christophobia because he, like so many in our society, have blindly, ignorantly and sheepishly absorbed the narrative of the state without critique, 
question or thought? Christians, one second. Christians have been dehumanized in every Islamic caliphate throughout history, without exception. Without exception. Christians were made second class citizens as dhimmis. And the Salafist propagandists that you see here today would seek to do that again in the UK. That is why you must stand up for your identity in Christ. Where is your voice for the Christians of Pakistan? Your Christians of Egypt? Why? Why? Do you not object to the fact that for 1400 years it has been illegal for Christians to worship in Mecca? Hey, look, answer, answer, so answer my question. Answer. I'm against all theocratic, theocratic and undemocratic regimes. And that includes Saudi Arabia, that includes America, because that is not democratic, as we can tell from the way that Bernie Sanders was cheated out of the uh, nomination for presidency. And it's the same for here. We don't have democracy. We're not being given a chance to uh, change our minds about our, 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 prime, our government should be held to account with the EU. I, I, I'm not pro-EU, but I'm against the way that it's been handled. It was done in a based on lies, and we're not given the opportunity to hold them to account on those lies that it was based on. So we don't have democracy here, just like maybe we have a little bit more democracy than in Saudi Arabia, but I'm not for these oppressive regimes of any sort. One second, one second. Here's, here's your ignorance, brother. And, uh, hold on. Hold on. Can I finish my point? Yeah, finish your point. So I will, I will condemn all violence against all religions, but at the same time, we are responsible for our own actions as a country, and we are not persecuting Christians around the world in the way no, that we... No, we're doing it here. No, we're not. We are. What Christians are dying here? Right, what Christians are dying here? Let me tell you about the case of Nisar. Do you know about Nisar? No, tell me. Right. So the Is this just brother one person? Asked, the brother asks... Is this one person? Let me finish, let me finish my response. Can I finish my response? 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 So, so, let's be clear. Exactly what I'm not saying. Exactly. If it's a Christian, that's his attitude. If it's a Christian, it doesn't matter. If it's a Christian, that's it. That's the attitude of the liberal progressive. That is the attitude of the liberal progressive. If a Christian dies, it's okay. It's okay if a Christian dies. I, I just, that's what you said. It's only one person. Okay, can you let me It's only one person. I'm going to make my point now. I'm going to make my point. Let me make my point. Can I make my point? Can I make my point? Can I clarify what I was trying to say before you interrupt? Okay, so the brother said. So the brother said, the brother said that he is opposed. Notice the tolerance of the liberal progressive. This man triggered liberal progressive. So my culture, right here. So my culture. This is so my culture. He said, I am opposed to all. Uh, political Islamic. systems that, that, that oppress that. people, undemocratic systems nonsense. that oppress no, people. That was his that. point. Yeah, yeah. No, it was he not. Say that. What he does not realize because of the state propaganda that he has absorbed is that Islam sanctions a series of laws that reduce Christians to a status similar to an apartheid system. So if he is opposed to undemocratic prejudice systems, he, if he is consistent to his values, should be opposed to Islam. But he won't because of the state propaganda. He believes 
that all religions teach the same. I never said that. That all religions on, believe the same. And all religions can, can be equally bad. Does Christianity teach that Muslims should be made second class citizens? No, let him on. Can I make point? Can I make point? Get in there. I'm against all religion. Go on, whether it's Christianity or Islam. But I I will fight for your right to believe whatever nonsense you want to believe. Good. Except yeah, unless those Christians live in Pakistan or oh, Egypt, yeah. in which of case not. you're totally silent. Of course I'm not. So when was the last Did you time? Not just hear me say when was the last time that we saw a bunch of liberal progressives protesting in their thousands for the persecution of Christians in the Middle East? Exactly. Never. Never. But if someone comes along and hands out a leaflet saying, "Oh." Some people are coming to criticise Islam. People like him will be out there on the street sh waving placards saying Nazis go home. I, 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 I don't say shit like that. I, I'm, not, I'm not as antagonistic as I've come across here. I will not throw insults. Your word. Your word. Hold on. Your word. You want to watch a video of me in the, at the Tommy Robinson uh, trial where I was hounded with insults from nonce to terrorist supporter. I didn't throw a single one back. And look what I got. I got a fucking cigarette butt in my helmet that could have set me alight while it was fucking hanging behind me. Any violence for someone for speaking at the corner is wrong. Exactly. So, so any other questions? We are both So the brother asks the question. It, Stupidly! Can I, just, can, I, can I just say, this Make guy up. will call me a soy boy, <laughs> call me rather, rather a progressive liberal, that you, you don't even you. know me, know but he'll label me, so, he'll, he'll label me a soy boy, you and call me, like, you are a soy boy, put me, like, is that very, is that Christian? Christ, Christ, called, Christ called the Pharisees, vipers and whitewashed tombs. You call people what they are. If you want to behave like I've a never, soy boy, I've I'll never, call you a I've soy I've never boy. even tasted soy. So, no I, don't, I don't even know what's going on. The brother asked the question, where do the Nazis go home? A pointless question given the talk. Nazi land. Because what I am saying is that I am yet to see all these liberal progressives, all these self-righteous, virtue signalling hypocrites come out on the streets once against the likes of Anjan Chowdhury. They're never protesting against his brand of hatred. They're never protesting against the groups like Jamaat al-Islamiya. They're never protesting against their brand of hatred. They're never on the streets protesting against Christophobia. Why? Because their value system is only for public display. Their value system is only for the applause of the media. They are hypocrites. And we should reject them. We should stand up for the church because that is our community. Regardless of how that is received by society because the church and its history is truly what made our culture our own. So Steve asks which church? Just so you know, this brother lent me the ladder. We like Steve. We like Steve. We like Steve. We got off to a bad start, but he's a good guy. So, which church? The faith is clear. There is only one church, one apostolic, one holy, one Catholic church. That is the church that Christ established, one founded on the teachings of the prophets and the apostles. It is Catholic because it belongs to all men, regardless of ethnicity. That's included. Ah, we'll just use the masculine. That's included. 
It is. It is. It is apostolic because it is built on the values and the doctrines of the apostles. It is holy because God has made it holy through what he has done through our Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. And it is the church because it is, it is the ecclesia, the gathering of all those who follow Christ and call themselves his disciples. Notice I said disciples, not Anglicans. I said disciples, not Roman Catholics. I said disciples, not Methodists. I said disciples, not Baptists. I said disciples, not Greek Orthodox or Romanian Orthodox or Russian Orthodox or Coptic or Greek. I said disciples because that is the true identity of the Christian. A disciple of Christ, not a denomination. Next question. What, what do you think of uh, Mary Magdalene? What do I think of Mary Magdalene? I think that Mary Magdalene... Okay, so there's two separate questions. What do I think of Mary Magdalene? What, what, uh, third question, and the, the amount of churches within Europe that are named after Mary Magdalene. Okay, so let me address those three points. What do I think of Mary Magdalene? A random question, nothing to do with a topic. Let me finish, let me reply. Brother, let me reply. Mary Magdalene was a follower of our Lord Jesus Christ. She was a good disciple. But all that crap you hear published by people that publish the Da Vinci Code and all those stupid, ridiculous conspiracy theories that she was somehow his lover or that somehow she started a family with him or that somehow she was the founder of another schismatic church or all myths. They're all nonsense. They're all ahistorical gibberish. You asked another question. What was the second question? What do I think of the Dead Sea Scrolls? The, 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 no, they don't. The, no, they don't. Well, which one does? No, they don't. Which, which, so, there's a Gnostic gospel okay, the Gnostic. from the third century. Okay, well, I'll, I'll so, so, the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls were found in the caves of Qumran quite recently and they are dated to the first century and they validate the Old Testament that Christians are using today and that historical proof disproves the claim of the Quran which is that by the 7th century the Old Testament was corrupted and lost. The Quran claims something that is counterfactual, contrary to the evidence and against the clear writ of history. And if the Quran claims something that is false, it is a false book. And if it is a false book, by the Muslims' own standards, it is not from God. Your the, third question. The, not the Gnostic Gospel. Because I, I really wanted to no, ask no, about... No, no, no. I really I wanted to ask third, about... What was your third question? Or I asked okay, someone else. The, the churches uh, uh, that are built in Mary Magdalene's name okay. across Spain, right. Europe and So he asks the about the questions of the fellowships that name their churches after Mary Magdalene. It is the custom of our Christian community to name our fellowships after the great people of our own history. And so we often name our fellowships after the great people of history. And Mary Magdalene, as one of the first Jews to recognize her own sin and to acknowledge Christ as the Messiah, constitutes one of those people. Next question.
prostitute? No, next question. Ask a question. Yeah. Was Jesus fertile? Was Jesus fertile? Yes. Next question. Next question. 